Height-wise, as you can see, I'm definitely pretty much the same height with my box. So again, transition from something as big as this to this, it's not a big deal. This may seem big to, you know, jeepers and those type guys compared to me. I'm just as big, really. <laughs> Problem with trucks too, even if you do two-door build and the whole thing is flat deck, uh, let's say 5500 truck, the hood on the trucks is taking away so much real estate, right? That's where real world is. Hey comrades, welcome back. So this is a little bit of a channel update. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know this channel is changing direction yet again. So it's kind of funny. I started learning violin uh, last week. Uh, picked up, I'm like, oh, okay, let's do some uh, creativity here. And life event happened. Basically, I have to move. I have to move by the end of the summer. I got two months. And based on that, I got an idea. So on the channel, quite a few times I mentioned that I want to do full-time overland travel. Overlanding is such a broad term these days. So let's just call it travel, full-time travel. Yeah, this kind of what happened just now, the, the need to move, to change new place. I, I started thinking, well, this is probably, you know, could use that as opportunity, something that I've been procrastinating, that whole dream of like, hey, let's get a different vehicle. Because this one is great, I love it, but it's only good for like month or two month trips, maybe three months. Like I, I can't picture living in it for, you know, like five years or something, you know, there's no shower, there's no this and that, especially because it's not just travel. I still have full-time job. It's still gonna be for many years. No, well, not for like for years to come because I need to earn proper money to prepare for, you know, kind of setting off on my dream journey. And uh, I still need to go to office and stuff. Uh, so I need shower, toilet, all that stuff, uh, you know, and I'm not about to uh, go to like some band lifers, uh, go to gyms uh, just you know to shower so this became a quickly the opportunity so i started looking well what can i do right for the next vehicle rapidly uh, sell this guy and uh, you know to help with the new build so you know i've been researching these things uh, and bumping into people on the road for the past four years like i know i've seen every possible unimog build there is uh, fuse a build in the build uh, all kinds of van life builds, uh, you know, just regular truck camper builds, and even Honda Civics people traveling to different countries. Uh, like, I've seen it all, right? Like, so I, I know pretty good idea of the pros and cons of each type, right? And there is never a perfect vehicle, absolutely never. Uh, so you take something like Unimog, you know, you do stealth, you're big, yes, you're more off-roady, but for box you can go this kind of tiny still. Good luck finding Unimog, especially in Canada, it's going to cost you a fortune, then you need to go to the box. It's going to cost you now a fortune just to get one properly done, then you need to build inside. So, same with like proper overland uh, campers, not the type campers you can just go buy an RV shop, but going to fall apart uh, pretty quickly in some years after shakes. Uh, you know, those things, they're so bulky. They make truck unstable. Um, you need to buy a proper, you know, 3500, maybe 4500, 5500 flatbed truck, put it on, you can buy a truck, you can buy a camper, now you're going past like 100 grand and so on. So, regardless uh, like of all these options, it seems to me that van build is the most proper, something like Sprinter. Uh, or uh, uh, for transit. Now that transits have four wheel drive since 2020, uh, and it costs about on average 20 to 30 grand less than Sprinter, it became a more viable option on the market. And that's what I'm actually considering. Yes, there is not as much clearance, you can put as big of the tires, but I've seen the builds with a little bit of lift, two inch lift, a little bit bigger tires. You can still go places. Yes, you can go on a tight trail and rock wall and I, but you know, after four years of driving around, I just found out that I'm not really 
uh, like overlanding is not about rock crawling or getting to some like tight little spot. You know, it's more about actually the true, real overlanding is traveling countries, long distances. And when you're in such travels, you don't take chances on some unknown tiny little trail where you can potentially break down. You know, that's a misconception. You see all those guys rock crawling, more ups, whatever, going to overland. That's not overland. That's not. Any real people who travel the, actually the world will tell you when they see an obstacle, if they can avoid it, they avoid it. Because any possible obstacle you go to, that's taxing on your vehicle. And, and eventually it's gonna pop, you need to fix it, right? So you are, either you try to avoid them and take the path of least resistance and have your journey uh, be longer because uh, you can put this money into actual travel if you want it or you put it in repairs, right? So any real people traveling out there, they're not doing those flashy things that most YouTube channels out there show. You know, guys that do like one week trip, two week trip, month trip, or just more up thing, or even just like me, right? Okay, maybe the Baja thing I did two, two trips were kind of like, you know, good sense of overland, right? It's third world country, you know, lots of barren land out there. Uh, not as much highways and that, but beyond that, uh, I wouldn't call any other trips. But they were really representative of true uh, spirit of Overland. Even my first trip, which was the most afforded trip I did, uh, the 36 day Overland, where I did like 30 trails, Moab, all this stuff. That's not really Overland. Overland people don't do that, real Overland people, because that was intense 30 days taxing vehicle. You know, uh, imagine doing it like, let's say you came from Germany and you do that for a month. After that one month, you know, you're probably going to have repairs to do and so on. You know, you're going to be stuck in some shops and uh, this is not how you go about this business. It's more about checking out scenery, yes, getting to some spots here and there, but not about hardcore things at all, at all. I don't know how many of you guys watching are living in Vancouver or British Columbia, but just to tell you, the situation with uh, housing market in British Columbia is the same as, let's say, San Francisco or the whole basically Western coast, California, right? And many other places, any coastal cities, New York and so on, right? We can just say Toronto, place, you know, any kind of coastal regions, it's ridiculous. So now I'm kind of like, okay, well, now I gotta move. I've been living in a place where I live that. For like a decade like super low price whatever like back in the day kind of prices and now i look at the market it's like holy it's like do i waste that money continue renting do i dip into mortgage and but now you know if i dip into mortgage it's like my living expense right away goes up so much that i'll not be able to have as much fun as i did and uh, mortgage is always something i kind of avoided for a while especially the poor prices right because like a single guy mortgage is just all you're doing is just working for mortgage. So I'm like, no, no, no. This is the opportunity now to. Yes, I still have to find a place to rent for a while, but this is the opportunity to get the next rig, build it up, sell this one, and uh, that the next one I can actually once it's built I can start living off while still going to offices and that. And in some years then it will be ready. I can just and off I go, right? Uh, to Argentina or whatever uh, so and I kind of been looking and I decided for transit is the best option but the problem is because of COVID past two years they didn't produce as many vans uh, both sprinters whatever vans is a hot commodity right now they didn't produce them as much uh, because of cheap shortages and all that in China and also high demand right because of housing prices everywhere or even the same thing in the states from right here uh, they're all sold out, even two-wheel drives. You can still find them on Craigslist, whatever, but, uh, you know, I don't need for... Like, critical thing for Overland is four-wheel drive. Clearance of them is not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, you have a little lift, this and that. Even, if anything, lockers, not that important, because you can uh, you can put max tracks on, you can have a winch, you know, help yourself out, kind of thing, it's here and there. So, you can live without it. But, uh, uh, and obviously, I'm not taking a van to Simpson Desert or, uh, you know, Canyon One Stock Route or whatever it's called in Australia. Uh, plus, you can't really port a vehicle to Australia. It's so hard. It 
like make sense to just fly in there, buy some 4x4 and actually do the tour there for a while and then fly back and continue in your van whatever you are in whatever country, right? But that's far away plan. So, uh, that van is basically my thing. The problem is you can find four wheel drives and the one that's on the market, they're already built out, they cost past 100k, it's not the build I want and it's just ridiculous prices. So I'm gonna likely order to the spec my own one with proper gearing, you know, 410 gearing, uh, for a heavier weight, for a nice torque and all that stuff. So I'll try to post updates like this. I'm not gonna be able to uh, produce kind of trip videos as I did and, you know, try to do immigration, this and that. There's just too much things happening all of a sudden right now. Uh, so I'm gonna be uh, hunting well, apartments and uh, also vans and researching van builds and start prepping. And likely what I'm gonna do in time... Oh, even if I order right now in the summer the van, the build, uh, whatever they'll deliver it to me on the around late fall or uh, beginning of winter so I have about five to six months actually that I can start prepping for the build I can actually because I do 3d art I can actually buy like the, the model of this lamp online if it's properly to respect the measurements and I can start uh, just to save time it's like 50 pounds model uh, but then I can start building the layout and everything I want how I want it in 3d and uh, yeah, potentially, maybe down the road, uh, I could design builds like this for other people in like years to come, you know, when I'm on the road. Who knows? It, it could be part of some kind of future business, too, as, uh, as an example. Uh, but so, also, what I wanted to do is quickly just to get a better idea of the size that I need of a van. Uh, I kind of know because, again, I've seen so many builds already by now. But again, one thing it's checking out things in, on YouTube, another in real life. So I've checked out some people's rigs, uh, but it's been a while. It's been a few years since I stepped in the last sprinter. Uh, so what I want to do is go to some RV places in the next couple of weeks and uh, check out a long version of Transit or Sprinter because it's very similar and the extended version. Problem with extended version, the wheel, the back wheel and the back of the van it's almost like this distance so climbing hills that's a challenge but to live full time let's say a decade oh you need like all this extra space you totally need that uh, especially if you want to build shower and toilet inside that's essentially your extra space for shower and toilet so it's come it's a game of compromises there is no again there's no ideal vehicle uh, but i want to go again go to rv places and kind of finalize my decision, check out already pre-built layouts, how they did things. And based on that decision, in probably a couple of weeks, I'll place an order. So another key thing I forgot to mention is why van? Because whatever next rig, I wanted to be able to get from driver's seat to inside or backwards, right? So in case of a situation in uh, third world countries where you need to just take off, you can, right? With track campers, it's impossibility almost. And with building something like Unimog or Fuso, uh, with box and uh, a walkthrough, it is possible, but then again, that's extra hassle. And another key thing is it's uh, it's easy on financing, right? I can just go get one right now, all right? Just care, just care about financing that thing and just start building. That's kind of the ease of it. So Monique recently did a video about a camper van that she actually got rented from this place just to try it out. And because this place is nearby me, the Karma camper vans, I decided to come here, check it out as a first place. And these are actually perfect because all they have is extended versions for transits. Right? Actually, I wish we had a, land, a regular length body just to get an idea. But I guess I'll see those in other RV uh, places. And I don't think these guys are lifted. You can still put two inch lift, slightly bigger tire. And uh, I think camper van compass, van compass does those. And I actually seen on the internet somewhere that you may even possibly get four inch lift, uh, some other brand, but I'll need to research. So that's the problem, right? Cl climbing any hills, huge, huge distance here. The regular length version cuts about here. 
right? Which is bearable, which is pretty fine actually with two inch lift. It's like it's this part. So potentially to mitigate that for any kind of scratching, whatever, could put uh, a steel steel plate in there, right? Later fabricated. So if you climb something, you scratch. It's not on all this plastic. It's you have skid plates actually for that. My name is Nick. Nick, he will show me around. All right, so height wise, as you can see, guys, I'm actually just a stall. Uh, how high are these guys, like including the air conditioner? Do you uh, know? 10 feet or about 3.05 meters. Including, in the, including air conditioning? Including the overhead. Okay, so my height is pretty much exactly the same, I would say, except the air conditioner. Pretty close. So as far as uh, dimensions, how I'm used to riding and uh, if I'm losing anything or, you know, I'm not losing anything, it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as high. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll still not be able to fit any parking lots. <laughs> Absolutely true. Okay. So this is a basic setup. Really? That's extended version? Yeah. So you get a queen that size. It doesn't seem like a whole lot of space compared to uh, like what's on YouTube sometimes you see people's setups. It really? always seems more spacious. Really? Maybe it's a fish eye so? of a uh, lens. It, it must be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, now I'm like, oh. It doesn't but, seem that big. I mean, it feels like yeah. a lot more room inside. It's quite tall. Yeah. But then again, that's probably because the bed right now is positioned... Because uh, sometimes I guess they position uh, perpendicular. Sometimes and, people do that, And yeah. right now the space is taken by bed going this way. Yeah, so it's a full queen size bed. We got plenty of room oh, to put yeah, things that, away. The, the garage. That, that's yeah. That's what I need Everything for sure. Everything you need for it. So the, the garage of a van is absolutely awesome. Well, once you put batteries, all that stuff, you put them living. Uh, but you could put some kind of disassembled bike in here if you need to ride. Or we also offer, we offer bike racks as well as part of our package. Mm -hmm. Part of the adults. Shall I get the Definitely. Well, yeah, this is built for obviously as a van vehicle. If you do full time, you would do more shelving here. Of you know, course, you go nuts. If you're oh yeah. Live in this full I time. would even. I was already thinking if I was doing full time, you know, people leave this wall just empty. Yeah. Oh no, I would have like small little compartments for like. Oh things. totally. You know, they totally don't utilize. From what I see online, <laughs> yeah. they don't utilize all the space there is. <laughs> no. I mean, it, oh, it'd be crazy. I have so right? many ideas all the time. But yeah. Love that whole wall can be little shelves. You know, not sticking out like this, no, no, but no, like this, almost, almost inside, right? A little bit, right? Yeah, so like like like, uh, like this distance up to here. Exactly. Right. That's extra space for little things, or even uh, this wall here, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I've seen people put full-size showers and stuff on this side. Yeah. Walk-in bathrooms. I mean, I'm kind of doing uh, research here uh, for myself. Right? Oh yeah. Like okay. Size-wise, uh, maybe even maybe run. Uh, yeah. I'll try it out one day for sure. And uh, yeah, just already from what I've seen, it's like, wow, thank you so much. Oh yeah, there's so many different ways you can go about it, man. And there's so many different outcomes, you know, based on what you're looking for. That's the fun of it. I mean, that's what interests me in it so much. It's just the versatility. Just enjoying it how you want it. How did you make the tank? Oh, you just did it like that, I guess. Very simple. And simple. if you look up to the left a little bit, you can see the water pump, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess for full time you need like a proper, yeah, proper, you, proper tank. You can get proper yeah. like bigger pumps and tanks and everything. Yeah, and that's exactly the beauty of that. You can just step in and right away, in the middle of Mexico, somewhere when people come with guns <laughs> <laughs> and put holes in you as you drive away. Because <laughs> <laughs> definitely the layout I'm interested in is that way. That's like the back. That's the bed. Two people can sleep like this. That's probably the shower space or whatever. And that's like closet or whatever it is. Okay. But the key thing here is... Ah, shit, I'm too tall. Just a bit. <laughs> that's why they do those... Uh, in Winnebago's and stuff, they uh -huh. do those little cutouts. The push-outs. Yeah, the yeah, push-outs. Yeah. Well, the other thing, the way we built them in here, these are all hiding insulation and stuff. So really, um, you know, if you wanted to, there's an extra few inches. Yeah, but, but I mean, full time, you gotta go insulation yeah. still. Like it's gonna be the same amount pretty much. Because uh, uh, your, yours is actually pretty 
minimized. I've seen in some videos some of these walls stick out even more. Yeah. People just dump whatever inside it. No, ours is just the it's the the uh, tinfoil backed fiberglass insulation. The bats yeah. are they're very thin. But yeah, they're very this is effective. Thin. Yeah. Uh. Oh man, but uh, I guess I could cut out something, but that's like extra expensive and all that. And you need to find someone to do it. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Oh, I was hoping. Maybe it's the Pro Masters that you can actually. Because aren't Pro Masters a little wider? I think they are a little bit wider towards the top, especially. These ones definitely taper. No, up, towards you know, top, yeah, they're just square. Yeah, yeah exactly. but as far as width overall, they're. I think they're a tiny bit wider. I'm not, I can't say it's on my head for sure. But even really with tiny bits. So. Damn it. I guess all the people I've seen that just simply do it like this. Short people. Ah. <laughs> uh, Okay, well, that, that's a challenge. That's good to know. Unless, but then again, if I'm a single, right? Like one bed with a diagonally. You thought about going with like a folding bed or anything, Murphy bed? Nah, I kind of want to permanently just yeah. be there. Yeah. 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 That way you can have a nice mattress. Yeah, exactly. Not, not, get, that's the problem, right? Like lots of van builds you see out there. They have like these folding shelves for bikes, this and that. It's like sure it's great to take skiing whatever and to imagine it full time every day having to hustle to deal with all these foldings and unfoldings and yeah. just to go to sleep it's like <laughs> one, one hint breaks and you're not going to bed anymore yeah yeah it's like no no again it depend, depends what you're looking for but it's misleading lots of those advertised bands out there it's like it's not good enough for full time not really no especially when they sell like 200 grand uh, van or 150 grand and there's not even like a shower. It so costs like, quite a lot, man. They charge a lot. A lot yeah, and no shower even. I've seen those like, like a, what? <laughs> none of, yeah, none of the good features, none of the luxury. Not even four wheel drive, too. Oh, it's like, what on. are you talking about? <laughs> are these four wheel drive? Cars? These are rear wheel drive. Okay, all of them, right? Yeah. Okay. We ask the customers to keep it on the road for the, for the rentals. Right. Or like simple forestry road? Simple forestry road's fine, yeah. yeah. Just no, no crazy off roading, no river beds. Oh, no river pads. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, it's gonna be hard for me to adjust. Yeah. With that, from going from that thing. Are you living? Are you doing everything in that? Not living no, there. no, I'm not living. But it's you know, I I taken it on month trips with that. Right. Oh, it's, it's good for that. Trips. Yeah, like wow. it's good. It's good for that. But you know, I can picture myself living in that thing and actually full time working on a computer for like a year's time. For sure. Right? That'd be way too much. Because as far as going places, like hiding away this it's perfect right but there's no ideal vehicle no it's it's a challenge so you, are you looking at like putting that aside and getting a van to use instead or are you getting yeah. that entirely or no sell that and get a van yeah. nice nice have you looked at any others no you were the first to like just like checking it out all right man, well thanks for showing me around no problem and i may come here to maybe uh, rent it out and try it out one day. I'd be happy to help you with that. Thanks. So definitely the extended version is not as big as I thought, size-wise on the outside, but also inside. It, there is definitely a fisheye lens effect, I think, what's happening in YouTube videos where everything appears to be uh, more spacious. Or it's the build, right? Because these, these guys, as I was talking to him, right? Obviously, they're built as rentals, so it's not optimized for space. In some drawers and things, they may be, you know, done, organized a little better uh, to utilize space. But anyway, so I, right now, what I did is I parked the noses exactly parallel. So I want to see just how longer my uh, this van is, and from a glimpse of it, it doesn't seem like much. It's not that much longer. Height-wise, as you can see, I'm definitely pretty much same height with my box. So again, transition from something as big as this to this, it's not a big deal. This may seem big to, you know, jeepers and those type guys compared to me. I'm just as big, really. <laughs> Problem with trucks too, even if you do two-door build, and the whole thing is flat deck, uh, let's say 5500 truck. The hood on the trucks is taking away so much real estate, right? That's where wheel well is, versus where van hoods are and their wheel wells. So 
of course I'm gonna miss if anything my big 35s you can fit 35s on uh, transits you can with two inch factory lift on 4x4 sprinter and two inch lift on top of that with some trimming you can fit 35s on transits you can't so two inch lift slightly bigger size tire three inch all right that's gonna give about this much lift for this guy which is not too bad again it's that back here so here they are leveled let's check out the back <laughs> the back the extended back is actually not that much bigger than me so basically my length right now is what would be the uh, long length of this fan because this is extended so long and it's roughly about actually here so uh, actually it would be a little bit shorter than my version actually a little bit shorter it's crazy actually now to picture just how long my truck is that gives it the perspective but again it's all that all that cargo space in that, so that's what matters. Still, inside is not as big as I thought, so... But then again, there is not a bigger option than four-wheel campers uh, and any type of pop-up campers. It's such a tiny space. I've been in those quite a few times. People traveling, you know, also researching here a few years ago. It's uh, good for travel trips, kind of like me, but to live in those full-time for decades or something, no. Because the thing is, I do 3D graphics, right? So even in the future, I'm not working in offices and that. Uh, it's going to be some kind of part. It's going to be some kind of part of my business, right? To do some kind of orders, do some kind of 3D work. And for that, I need a proper computer. I need like two, three monitors. It's not like one of those tiny little laptop things. You know, I need powerful things, like a little office, basically. So it needs to be like a little actual studio also not just living space all right guys so this is part of my series of quick vlogs it's not going to be pretty there's not going to be some fancy edits i don't have time right now to do that it's just other things to do with so it is what it is i'm just going to be showing you what i'm looking at and my thoughts about it and some of most of it you have actually heard already in this video all right ciao maybe get one of those or one of these you know box tracks Problem is they don't come with four-wheel drive. If you guys know any big size trucks like this, five-ton trucks, whatever, uh, like um, Freightliners, uh, whatever brands there, internationals that are in four-wheel drive, any models, specific models, do let me know, I would like to know. Because uh, putting a big box on those would potentially serve my needs. I'm still not sold on van, on extended van. It's not as much space as I'm kind of foreseeing for my full-time living.